um, book author, speaker, and principal program manager with Microsoft. And I'm here with Matt today to talk about PHP and Laravel. And Matt, you want to do a quick intro? For sure, yeah. So I am a CTO at Titan, which is a consultancy that mainly works with Laravel. So that's kind of what we're talking about today. Uh, O'Reilly author and constantly try to make video courses with people, but none of them are alive yet. So right now, O'Reilly's the main thing. Hang out on Twitter, speak at conferences, that kind of stuff. Nice, so. nice. Thanks for joining me today and doing this. So um, let's start out. Let's dive in. So there's a question that never dies. Always <laughs> see it coming up on Twitter, right? Yep. See it, uh, other social media uh, platforms. For a developer that's just getting started, like, why would PHP be a good language for them to get started with versus yeah. something else like JavaScript or Go or... You know. Right, because PHP is dead, right? Nobody uses PHP, nobody likes PHP. That's what always comes up. That's the up, story. Right? Yeah. I mean, I feel like we should start with that story. The story is PHP is dead, PHP is what we used back in the 90s, and now there's all these hot new things, you've got to use them. And that's coming from a lot of people from two different places. One of those places is whatever's hot and new is what we've got to use, right? So Ruby's also dead to some of these people, and Elixir is about to be dead to some of these people. It's always the newest, hottest. But the other people are people who genuinely used the PHP of the late 90s, and they're like, it doesn't have object-oriented programming, it doesn't have a good dependency manager, you know, it doesn't have good security practices, and then I moved to .NET, Ruby, whatever else, and then I had real programming. So in their minds, PHP of 1997 is still where PHP is today, and then they just spread that to all the new people who then just wrote, repeat the same concept that's not actually still true. So the baseline idea is the PHP of 2022 is not the same language as the PHP of 1997, and we gotta understand that from a baseline. So then we gotta look at what is PHP today? still powers 80% of the internet, still is on basically every server that's ever existed, still one of the easiest programming languages to learn. So PHP versus JavaScript is a little tough because JavaScript, you got the full stack. So I wanna, I wanna honor the fact that learning JavaScript today means you got front end and you got back end. So I'm not gonna hate on the idea of learning JavaScript today. However, if you're gonna learn something other than JavaScript, especially you're talking about Go and Dart and Elixir and all these very kind of hyper-focused languages, PHP is a generous language, it means you have mm. access to do all these amazing things in all these spaces, and you can get jobs doing everything from the simplest stuff, CMS development work like WordPress and Drupal, mm. to the most complicated stuff, building massive enterprise applications with Symfony and Laravel and stuff like that. So the flexibility that comes from learning PHP, in addition to the fact that PHP and JavaScript work together really nicely, it's ubiquitous, it's absolutely everywhere. You can get entry-level work when you've only been writing it for a couple months, or you can get super advanced work when you've been doing it for 10 years. So. I think that the first thing to say is the bad rap PHP has earned is not is not the truth anymore, right? It was it was well earned back in the day. It's not the truth anymore. And the second thing is it is flexible in a way that no other language but JavaScript is. So I'm not trying to say PHP over JavaScript, but I'm saying if you're going to learn a back-end language that's not JavaScript, PHP is hot. So awesome, thanks for that. And in in just like a minute or two, maybe you could summarize how Laravel. You mentioned that, yeah. How that modernizes PHP. And yeah. How it basically brings it up to speed and really, in many cases, surpasses other frameworks. Yeah, so before Laravel, um, there was a couple small frameworks that were trying to come up in the PHP world, but this was before we had a good dependency manager, which is called Composer. So every single application, there was no really great way to share code between frameworks or between applications or between you know even my project and my next project. It was just copy and paste big chunks of code. So Ruby had Ruby gems, you know, Python had all their different things, and, and we had nothing. So at that point, everything was really a like start from the very beginning, start from the bottom, and just try to dredge up something you know that's mm. that's decent. But there's no concept of like this shared knowledge of like we figured out security really well, and now we're going to share it with y'all. So open source without a dependency manager is a really tough thing to do because how do you share code. There's literally a website called PHP Classes where you just went and copied a big chunk of code and pasted it in and hoped it was good and read the comments where someone said, oh, there's a typo online, blah, 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 but they're not going to fix it. You uh. just have to read the comments, right? Nothing like, you know, sh sharing this stuff in GitHub at this point. And then one of the main guys in one of these frameworks, Taylor Otwell, was like, um, I want to create a new way of doing it. And he did a lot of really good things like dependency injection, a lot of much more modern stuff. So that was the first mm -hmm. thing, is bringing a lot of the modern development practices into this. But then, right when he was about to rewrite the whole thing from scratch, this thing called Composer came out. And Composer was a dependency manager that allows you to have version constraints, Semver, you know, pulling all your code off of you know centralized GitHub or GitLab or whatever, and all the modern stuff we're all now used to. And so if you're familiar with NPM and Node modules, the JavaScript folks, this is our version of that. And so he rewrote the whole thing on top of that using a lot of components from another really popular framework called Symfony. And so now all of a sudden we have all the best kind of pieces of modern framework life where we 
everybody can see all the code, everybody can pull request the code. You get the best security person in the world, and they're going to go look at the audit the security code. You get the best routing person in the world, they're going to go audit the routing code. Mm -hmm. The best CSRF person in the world, they're going to audit the CSRF stuff, right? So you get the benefits of open source. You get all the modern code development practices. And so one of the cool things about Laravel from uh, um, how it modernizes PHP is that Taylor was a .NET programmer prior to this, and he also looked at all the best Ruby programmers and all the rest, all the best, you know, all the other kind of frameworks and said, what can we pull from all these different spaces? So it has dependency injection built in, and it has inversion of control built in, it has all the best security practices. So whether it's your design practices or your database practices, those were all baked in from scratch and they keep getting better and better and better. So baseline, mm. Laravel came in together with Symfony and just said, hey, we're going to bring all this best stuff in, stuff in, and every day you say Laravel new, that's already baked in. So that's the first thing. But your second question is, how does it surpass some other things? And this is what people don't talk about with PHP enough. Ruby is wonderful. Elixir is wonderful. JavaScript is wonderful. I wrote some Node apps. I wrote some Express apps. I like those things. But you do everything from scratch every time. The last time that I wrote a Node app and didn't have to say, wait, there's still not a canonical author, a canonical database, or a canonical whatever that everybody uses still, right? With Laravel, you're going to use their basic stuff out of the box. But also, if you need to add a whole bunch of other stuff, you need to add your own OAuth server. You need to add social login with GitHub. You need to add all these other things that aren't in every app. There's already a native Laravel built-in thing for that. You need to do Algolia-based full-text uh, search or whatever. Okay. Yeah, there's already a native one for that. And if there's not one that's made by Laravel, there's people in the community who have built it and then said, oh, yeah, yeah, just use this one. You need to build an admin panel. Great, there's admin panels. You need to be, build a blogging platform. There's a blogging platform. So it's the ecosystem of tools that are created around it that really sets it apart from a lot of the other like really great modern application development frameworks mm. today because it's not just good and modern and caught up to Rails and all those other ones. It's doing stuff that the other ones aren't. And sometimes it's just in terms of pre-bundled tools that are already there, like I just mentioned. And sometimes it's actually new thinking. So like Phoenix had, it wasn't called Livewire, but LiveView or something like that. So a guy in the Lerva world made this thing called Livewire and did some new things with how he implement, mm -hmm. implemented it that nobody else has. And then mm -hmm. Rails saw that and they're like, oh, kind of like that, we're gonna pull that. So it's no longer just catching up. It's now kind of like pushing some boundaries, leading some things and doing stuff that nobody else is. Yeah, that's really good. And I think a lot of people don't realize that about Laravel that it's doing a lot of new things. Yeah. So that's really great. So another question that always comes up when folks are looking at frameworks or even languages, who's using it, right? <laughs> so right. Do, you, do you have maybe an example of like three heavy hitter websites out there, really popular websites or web apps that are well known yeah, that so are built on PHP and Laravel. There's a if we're talking about PHP, I mean, there's everybody's built on well, PHP. Okay, but so let's, let's talk about Laravel. Let's go to yeah. Laravel. Yeah. So the pr the problem is the biggest ones I can't say, and I, I'm sorry that I can't say, but I'm just gonna say is there's some bigger than what I'm saying right now that are completely Laravel top to bottom that I'm not allowed to say, but we've connected with them. I can say some other ones that use Laravel that are big. So Apple uses Laravel. Oh, okay. NASA uses Laravel. I think NASCAR might be used Laravel, but a couple of like just massive institutions use them. And not everybody knows Genentech by name, but Genentech is the biggest, the, the origin of the biotech industry. So like if you go look at okay. Jurassic Park, you're going to see mentions of Genentech everywhere. Yeah. Genentech is Laravel the whole way through. If you're a pro sound person, Sweetwater Sound, literally everything that powers their factory, their, you know, the barbershop, the, the DVD thing there, there's a little slide in their thing and that takes a little picture of you as you go down the slide, that's all Laravel. Everything in their tire site, their tire everything is all in Laravel, all their customer services in Laravel. Wow. Publishing okay. Clearinghouse uses Laravel. So it's not always like the hot startups. And the, the hot startups are usually the ones I can't tell you about. So there are some hot startups that, that use Laravel we can't talk about. But it is everywhere. Like, And we just day after day after day, we're like, oh, that thing that I use every day, that thing that my mom uses, whatever's got Laravel on it, cool. Because you'll just see it show up on the job board. Or you'll see their text like, show up on our GitHub forums or asking stuff like that. So it is, it's everywhere. That's awesome. So that, that brings us to our next question. There's a misconception that if you're coding in PHP and using like Laravel as a framework, most of the jobs out there are gonna be freelance. Right. But I think folks wanna know, you know, there's a number of folks that do wanna take those freelance jobs, but folks also wanna know like, how do I get into the enterprise, right? Sure. Start making that real money. Yeah. Start doing really well and like, so. I can answer that real quick. Okay. That's real easy. So I run Titan, which is a consultancy that does Laravel. So people come to me and my business partner, Dan, and they say, we need to pay you way more than we would pay an employee to build Laravel applications for us. Now, sometimes it's because they don't have a team, right? So, and that's fine. Agency makes a ton of sense. But a lot of times they say, we have a team and we can't grow fast enough because we can't hire fast enough because mm -hmm. there's not enough people out there. Can we hire you to do this work? while we hire some juniors, and can you help train up these juniors for us? So that's one of the things we do all the time. And I love okay. doing it, don't get me wrong, but that wouldn't be happening if there weren't a dearth of Laravel programmers out there. 
So if somebody wants a job doing Laravel, there's jobs for you. End of story, no questions. Go to larajobs.com, list after list after list, item after item. You got remote work, you got enterprise work, you got small work, you got startup work, you got CTO work, everything you can imagine. There's more jobs than there are programs for program or programmers for Laravel. Easy. Got it. You can also do freelance work. High quality free, Laravel freelancers are also in big demand. Whatever you're looking to do, it's there. And enterprise too. I mean, like many, many, many of our clients have a team of 50 bring us on say hey can you give us a team of six while we hire another 15 right so i'm not just talking about small time stuff there's a little bit of a concept if there's any php people, people listening that symphony is for enterprise and laravel's for the young upstart stuff mm. what i want to say there just a real quick note i won't go in there too far is symphony is very structured it's very architected it's very much planned around like we're going to do this right up front and laravel's more like you do what you want so with laravel you can structure Got it you it. can do all that stuff or you can keep it real scrappy, you know, rapid application development, whichever you want. So it's not like Laravel's rapid application, Symfony is big structure, it's just Laravel lets you pick what you want. So Laravel is in the enterprise. Again, I can't tell you all of them, but I can tell you one, Red Ventures is one of like the biggest VC firms in the country, oh, okay. and tons of their things are using Laravel. Just, I mean, I wish I could tell you, but if you Google, I can tell you this at least, if you Google mortgage, just you wanna say like mortgage calculator, yeah. top, two, three, four results is using Laravel. I can't tell you which one, oh, but okay. This, okay. there's some big stuff going on there. Folks can do that themselves. The, yeah, Go exactly. Look for that themselves. So. so here's another question. Why would you use Laravel over a content management system like Drupal, mm -hmm. Joomla, or the most well-known WordPress? WordPress. Right? Yeah. That's a fantastic question. So I would say if what you need done can be done with an existing tool, whatever the tool is, whether it's a CMS or a CRM or whatever else, use the existing tool. End of story. Like the main thing we do at Titan is like, I, I would rather not fire a client because that sounds bad. I would rather end the contract with the client because I realize that there's an off the shelf tool that does what they need than pay, you know, take their money to make something that's already out there. Got it. So literally first thing we do with every new client is say, I know you think you know what you need, but what problem are you actually trying to solve here? And then once we address the problem, now we can go together to figure out is this thing you're planning actually the best tool for it? Usually by the time we're actually asking that question, we're good because we kind of handle that earlier in the process. But I would say if if a content management system is the best solution for your thing, then don't touch Laravel. You can do it in Laravel. So okay, that's tiny caveat. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. If you're building a business card type website, right? Here's who we are, here's some pictures, here's a couple blog posts, here's our contact information, our map, whatever. Use WordPress for that, use Drupal for that. Drupal is a little bit better for much bigger systems. Like you think like a university where they've got 20 different sub organizations that share pieces of content together. So Drupal is really big for that kind of stuff where it's like all these interrelated pieces that need to be able to pull a little bit from each other but have their own independent stuff and you need non-technical people logging in. Drupal's mm. a great fit for that. But the moment you're doing anything that doesn't exist in one of those tools, so it's a custom web app that people have to log in, it's a custom mobile app that needs an API as a back end, it's custom pulling data from all these different systems and crunching them in this way and presenting them that way, you need a custom web app. Whether it's Laravel or something else, it's gotta be custom. Oh, okay. If you're in PHP and you need a custom web app, Laravel is the place to go. So the only place I would say that if you do need to build a content management system that also will do a lot of that stuff, that's when it might be worth building the content management system in Laravel. But even then, there's a tool called Laravel Nova that you can buy for su super cheap, like 50 bucks, and it's like a basically all the structured Lego pieces of a content management system. You slap them all together, and then they're perfectly in integrated into a Laravel app, and then you can do all the fancy stuff while not having to write a CMS from scratch, right? So even Got then, it. you're not gonna do it from scratch, so. Got it. Yeah, thanks for that. And <clears throat> where's the best place that folks can go to to get started with Laravel? So the, the best free place to go is gonna be, there's two options. One of them is laravel.com slash docs. Okay. The Laravel documentation has been, so the guy Taylor who wrote Laravel was very, very intentional in creating something that would be as easy and accessible to as many people as possible and that would create a really like healthy and welcoming community around that. That was like from day one before no, anybody knew who he was, he's like, I'm gonna do that because that's what makes a project like this successful. Got it. So he created the forums. So there's a Discord, Discord that's going on really well. There's Laracast's forums, those are all free. And the docs, he rewrites them like every year from scratch. He puts himself in beginner mindset and just says, if I'd never heard of this before, what's the best place? And he's always talking to people saying, wow. oh, I have trouble with wow. the docs this way or whatever. And so he'll just disappear for two months. Wow. And he comes back out and the docs are completely rewritten. So the docs used to be this very structured, here's this system, here's that system. And he realized that people want more like a narrative form, right? So he rewrote it where it's more like, here's what you should know first, here's what you should know next. So just read the docs. Docs is the, the best place to go. Number two, I made this project with my team at Titan called OnRamp. It's onramp.dev, 
And the goal was to point to not our own resources, but external free resources and paid resources. If you want to go from never writing a line to Laravel, whether you're a WordPress programmer, a front-end programmer, or never program in your life, those are the three tracks, and you want to get to the point of being a paid professional Laravel programmer, we just said, here's the skills you need to know, learn, and here's the place to learn those skills. So you sign up for a free account, and you check off each skills. You feel like you learned it, and you move through. And by the time, if you have mastered all those skills by the end, I can guarantee you you're ready to get a job. The third one is the canonical paid learning resource is laracasts.com. I think it's like 10, 15 bucks a month. Okay. And it is thousands of videos for Laravel. So it's a really solid thing. And then I did write a book. I wrote an O'Reilly book, so I'll plug it. I have to plug um, that. <laughs> it's a, if you're a reader, it's a 575 page book that has everything you could possibly need to know about. It's called Laravel Up and Running. If you're not a reader, don't touch it. <laughs> it's a 500 page book. But a lot of people who are readers and like to learn that way, the goal again was I was like, if you pick up this book and have never heard of Laravel, you went finished reading this book and you can go to get a job doing Laravel. That was the goal. So Nice. Yeah, and I have to plug Pluralsight. Come on. Um, just released yesterday, actually, mm -hmm. was Laravel uh, 9 Fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And then Laravel Big Picture is coming pretty soon, and that course will be developed by me. I was going to say, I've heard, I think I heard of the author of that one yeah, at some point, so, right? So you so got to check those out. Definitely check out Pluralsight. There's Laravel content out there. Yeah. Thanks for doing this interview. This was awesome. A lot of great information. Is there anything else you want to add before we close out? Uh, I would say if anybody has any questions or concerns about these things, I'm at Style Format on Twitter. Hit me up. Obviously, they can hit you up, too, so you got to give your handle. But like, we would both be happy to answer any questions, help you all get connected, whatever it needs. The goal is to make it access accessible to as many people as possible, right? So like, whatever we can do to make that happen, we're here for it. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. All right. Thank you.